Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of The Gamut Network. Such a talented and interesting young woman we have on the show today. Her name is Quiche Lino, and it's her name is as fabulous as she is. So let's get right into it. Good morning, good evening, wherever you're calling from. How are you? Lovely to have you on the show. Hello. So wonderful to see you. I know that we have tried to get this interview on for quite some time, and I'm just so happy that we got it to work out. Um, let's just start where we always do. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you, um, how, your, your, how you began? Tell us a little bit about the story of Quiche Lino. Quiche um, <laughs> so basically, I started out as a dancer. Um, I've been dancing all my life since I was three. Um, but as I moved up into, let's see, middle school, I did cheerleading as well. Um, but once I graduated, I went on to college. Didn't think nothing about like dancing. I just cheered in college. Once I graduated uh, college, that's when I started making dance videos, you know, going back to what I was doing. Um, as a dancer, started making dance videos and it became viral. And that's how I started, I guess, you know, gaining more followers and starting to do more in the dance world. Um, I've been blessed with the opportunity to teach um, at a dance studio now. So I'm a dance teacher as well teaching kids, competition and recreational. Um, just, I've been able to, you know, do a lot of different shows, different um, concerts. Um, I had the biggest opportunity uh, to perform for Janet Jackson. What? Um, in Atlanta. Rhythm Nation, Janet Jackson? Yes. Oh my God, that's exciting. That's my jam, that's my generation. So yeah, I had that opportunity. And this was like literally 2018. So yeah, not longer. That is so exciting. And you know what? I, I love that when I asked you that question, you went right into um, who you are as a person and what, you, what your calling is in terms of dancing, uh, rather than talking about your dwarfism. And I think that that is such a beautiful and, and something that I definitely wanted to underscore that that's how we want everybody with a disability to um, be received, right? That that's, that doesn't define who you are. You right. are incredibly successful in your own right. Um, but your, your dwarf, dwarfism is certainly part of your story. So right. tell us a little bit about that. Um, you happen to have an incredibly unique version of it. So fill us in a bit on that. Um, okay, so basically I am a dwarf. Um, I stand three, five and a half. Don't forget the half. Um, I was technically told as um, a newborn to my mom that I wouldn't make it. You know, I was in ICU for a period of time. I don't even remember the exact time. Uh, but from what I was told, you know, the story a long time ago, I was in ICU. There were so many complications. Um, so, yeah, I went on for about, I think it was 23 or 24 years thinking that I was a certain type to come to find out that none of the characteristics match a certain type of dwarfism. So they consider it as unknown. Um, so yeah, my, I mean, I've, I've had, you know, different complications. I've had different obstacles that keep me from doing certain things, but I still have to find a way, you know, to make it happen. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's really, it's really basically it. I love it. And can you educate um, our audience a bit? I know I certainly love the education. On, mm -hmm. um, Physically, besides this, your stature and your your limb, dip, you know the the length of your limbs. Physically, internally, are there certain aspects that can affect the health of somebody with with dwarfism? Um. So honestly, I I mean I can only tell you like what I experienced because yeah. I really don't. I honestly don't know much, only because I really haven't like research none of the, like it doesn't really cross my mind to where I'm like okay I need to find out like I've been told you know it's good to know about yourself but I don't want that to just be like a pinpoint so um with me um as far as like structure wise 
um I mean my shoulders and my neck because I really don't have like um an actual like long neck to where you can actually tell so that's one thing that hurts um my knees uh, I'm actually not need uh so my knees go inward mm -hmm. which stand up you would actually be able to tell like if I stand straight my knees go like this so a lot of times like that because it's uncomfortable yeah um, not used to standing like that anyways but um that's one thing my knees are not need and oh when I was younger I did have to I do have scoliosis so I had to wear a okay. back brace yeah. and I also had to wear leg braces because they wanted to break my legs so that they could become straight and I wouldn't have so many issues but back then I was dancing, cheering, I was, I did pageants, like I was doing too much and they didn't know specifically how long it would take for them to do surgery on my spine and my legs and for me to have to start all over. Mm. It would take at least, like I would have to relearn everything and I was just like, y'all don't even know. And then you have to grow, you know, in order for it to heal. Y'all don't even know how long I have until I stop growing. When, mm -mm. And if I had to say so, it was going to be no. So, yeah, that was basically You clearly have a say-so, my <laughs> friend. I, I love the oh, yeah. whole if energy you're... of the say-so. I love it. And <laughs> did you ever, I mean, you're, you were so involved in dance and cheer and whatnot. Did you ever experience anything growing up of bullying or feeling not accepted? Or were you just? a part of the the mix so um this is a story that i tell a couple of people you know when it comes to my mind or it's relevant mm -hmm. uh it wasn't with dan it wasn't with cheer it was actually with pageants um and a lot of people don't know this but i did pageants and i used to win all the time and of course you know because of the color of my skin a lot of people i went to for one let me back up dance i was the only black girl in my community, it was rarely like a lot, a lot of us Blacks that did stuff, unless it was football, basketball, you know, the norm, what yeah. most people, um, and in our community, it was predominantly Black, well, predominantly white, but with a little bit of mixture. So, of course, you know, I did dance, I did cheer, and I did pageants, and in my school, I was also like the only Black kid. So, I went to a private Christian school all the way up until sixth grade. Mm. So fast forward, okay. Um, with pageants, I did for about three years, maybe. I was only around four or five, maybe, okay, no, five and six. And my mom had me, of course, you know, I'm the only black kid and I'm a little person. So a lot of the pageants, you know, people would be like side eye. She told me I've had so many people that would not, their parents wouldn't congratulate me um because I was a black little girl and one show that we had um this parent was so upset at the fact that I won against her um well his daughter and the daughter came up to me you know I was congratulating her because that's the type of person I was raised to be and that's how I was as a little kid like I always congratulated congratulated her and the parent walked up and snatched her away and said if I'm not mistaken, these are somewhat around the exact words that were told to me from what they said. You don't allow, no, you don't let no little black girl beat you. Yeah. So, um, that's really like the only thing that kind of like was like, wait, what? What does that I'm have to sure do? That, I bet that's exactly what your reaction was. Like, did that just really happen? Like, and see, that, I don't even remember it happening because yeah. I was so young. My mom and dad told me the stories of what happened. Because see, back then when I was younger, like nothing ever mattered. My first best friends and everybody were white. So that's what I was accustomed to. Like mm -hmm. both black, both white. Like I didn't, color wasn't an issue to me. So and that's how she wanted me to be. So I guess that is kind of why she put me in that school. But yeah, that that was, it was a, yeah. 
and and obviously very current on on what's happening you know with our world but i'm curious now that you're 27 do you think that would have happened again if you were in a pageant in today's day and age do you think we've gotten any better um it it probably would have been worse honestly because of the fact uh I mean, of course, now that we have more um, African Americans that are doing pageants, of course, but as far as if that same situation were to occur in today's day, I definitely feel like it would have happened with a little bit of more escalated things. Mm, on both sides. And, or, yeah, and it would have probably happened on both sides. If, if it were my age now, yeah, that wouldn't have slid. If I were younger, but in today's world, it probably still wouldn't have, yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. But I'm, uh, you know, I think it's something that probably, um, I, I love that it didn't really affect you, right? You, you right. have to be even no. sure what happened. Um, and it allowed you to have the path that you carved out for yourself and are still carving out. But yes. I would love to treat our viewers, if it's okay with you, with maybe a little, a little dancing. Uh, sure. Um, do you want silent music or? Uh, whatever you want. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Can y'all see me? TikToker? Um, eh, I mean, I have TikTok. My followers isn't that crazy. It's only like 6K. But, uh, oh, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, <laughs> but do you, I, I am curious if you see, like, you know, do you get any inspo from the TikTok? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I make a lot of the, you know, I remake a lot of the videos that are viral yeah. um, with the TikToks and all of that. Um, of course, I don't know if you noticed, but they have the new thing with reels on Instagram. Hmm. It's like a video um, application where it's just like TikTok. So I use that a lot. Now, those go up even more for me, I guess, because my Instagram is higher. So, yeah, a lot of my videos um, on TikTok, they kind of don't go. So I'll post those on my reels on Instagram. Um, which I actually just got rewarded uh, for doing that from Instagram. I just got a package from them. Yes. For them. Fantastic. So now if people want to see your reels or see mm -hmm. more of you dancing, where should they go? So you'll go to my Instagram. Um, of course, my Instagram is Lino. That's two E's and three O's. K-E-E-S-H-L-I-N-O-O-O. -O -O. So two E's and three O's. Um, and you would go like, you could scroll down my normal page. Um, a lot of my reels are just posted on there. They have this, um, it's like a little play button, like, um, YouTube, but it has the little lines on the top. It's okay. like the over when you swipe over in your Instagram page and you'll see most of my reels that may not be on my page. Those are there. Um. Or if you want to go to YouTube and see dance videos or, you know, a lot of my dance videos is everywhere, but uh, my YouTube is the same. Keisha Lino. Okay. Absolutely. Everybody go check her out. It's amazing. And we are loving supporting you. Before Thank we you. go, uh, I'd like to ask all of my guests one final question. And okay. that is about the power of uh, manifesting or creating a vision board for what you want your life to look like. And I cannot wait to hear, if we got to, to peek on your vision board, what would we see? So, honestly, this is crazy because I've never made a vision board a day in my life. But I do, what I guess you could say what my vision board would be, would be a notebook. And what I do is, okay. I write down, same thing as manifesting. Um, 
you you have to know what your goals is and what you want in life and you have to know how are you going to get there so you have to write those things down so it's like steps or mm -hmm. ingredients you're making a meal you have to be able to know what ingredients are you adding to make that meal how are you going to cook it what's the time frame um it, it all goes your ingredients would you say so with me um <laughs> the three things that are very important a part of the ingredients would be be yourself stay consistent and enjoy it mm. uh, along the way, you know? Um, as far as that, I always have to practice uh, when it comes to dance, if I'm doing dance. If I'm, I'm actually getting into acting, so now I'm about to start putting more concentration and work into creating some type of acting videos. Right. Um, you know, you have to practice your craft. You have to be able to know what you're doing because if someone comes and acts, for you to do something because they seen it, you have to know, okay, what it is that they're expecting, how to make it happen. It's it's almost just like with uh, making Instagram videos. They want you to dance to a song. Like you gotta know if this song is fast or slow, can you still do it? You know, yeah, how are you gonna get it? Very accurate. So yeah, a lot of things, it is very true when they say, you know, manifest and just, Think about what it is that you want to do and how are you going to get there. I love it. And I, I have no, uh, no doubt that you are getting there. Whatever that looks like, wherever you spread your wings and fly to, you, my friend, are getting there. And it was such a joy to have you on the show. I Thank you. loved it and I can't wait to watch you dance through life. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. If you'd like to be on the Gamut Network, please email us at talent at gamutmanagement.com to tell us why you'd be a great guest. Please also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Gamut Network, as well as follow us on social media at Gamut Management. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye.